Hello friends. <clears throat> Today I want to talk to you about the love of God and us continuing in that love. Now let, let me preface all this by saying this. I don't normally do this but I'm going to do this. Um, for some reason today, normally I record these messages at church during the service and and uh, the video didn't record today at church. And so okay, I thought well, I'll come home and I'll just record it like I, I've done that before. And so I just finished recording this message and there was no volume this time. And I got to tell you, that's kind of discouraging. It's almost the point, it's like, uh, you know, I give up. But for whatever reason, I guess the devil doesn't want this message to go out there. And so I'm, we're going to give this one more try. And I think I've got volume now and I've got video. And so we'll go forth with this, all right? And so hopefully this is a blessing to somebody out there today. And if you're listening to this today, you know, and you're, I, I, let me, I usually I would say this at the end, but let me say this right up front, okay? Uh, to get these videos into the, into the ears of more people and before the eyes of more people, it helps if you like the video. And so if you see this on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, then, then like the video and share it and subscribe to the channel and click that little bell icon so that you get notifications. Do all those things that they talk about on these YouTube channels to get this message out into the, the ears of as many people as possible because I believe there's someone out there that perhaps needs to hear this message for whatever reason. Okay, But we don't want to talk, start out today by talking about the love of God. Here in John chapter 15, these are the words of Christ. Jesus is talking to his disciples, teaching them, and he uses that phrase, continue ye in my love. And you know, what does that mean, to continue ye in my love? And so that's what we want to address today, what Jesus meant by that phrase. So let's go ahead and read our text, John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. If you have your Bible, uh, you can read along with me. Uh, but this is what the Bible says. In John chapter 15, it says, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things <clears throat> that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. And so he starts out, though, he talks about, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. So he's talking about the love of God. And then he says, continue ye in my love. And many people feel that when they read that, there's he's telling us to continue to love God, to continue to love Jesus. And that's not really what it means. Uh, most of the commentaries, and, and I agree uh, with them, is what they're saying, it's not to continue to love God, but rather to continue in the enjoyment, and some of them even say the possession of God's love to you. Okay, Continue in the enjoyment of God's love for you. You enjoy the fact that God loves you. I can tell you straight up that when I finally realized that God loved me, that's what changed my life. Now I grew up, you know, in a religious home. We went to church, okay, uh, but so many times I felt like I was not loved, like God didn't love me, that he didn't care, that he wasn't involved in my life. And many times I felt unlovable, you know, for whatever reasons. And I'm sure that there are a lot of people out there that are that same way. And we just don't realize just how much God loves us. But I'm here today to tell you this, okay, that God loves you. The Bible is very plain when it says that God loves us and that Jesus Christ died for us. My friends, today God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You need to be saved today. We are all sinners. The Bible says we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And as such, we deserve to die and spend eternity in hell. But God loves people. The Bible says God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And that's why he sent Jesus to die on the cross, so that if we'll repent of our sins and trust Jesus as our Savior, he'll save our souls and reserve us a place in heaven for all of eternity. That's how much God loves you. Paul wrote it this way in Romans 8. He says, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. My friends, today God loves you. So many times we say, oh, how could God love me? He, he, does, he, does he know what I've done? Does he know where I've been? Does he know what I've said? Yes, he does. 
and yet he still loves each and every one of us and as I said that's what changed my life okay and there's a song that we sing many times it says I'll live for him who died for me <clears throat> I want to live for my God I want to continue in his love that's what Jesus is talking to us today and so what does that mean? What does that look like? Continuing in God's love. Jesus shares, I believe, four things with us here in this passage of Scripture of what continuing in God's love looks like. Okay, And so understand, first and foremost, if you get nothing else out of this message, understand this is that God loves you. Plain and simple. You know, even when we feel unlovable and even when we feel like maybe God doesn't love us, you know, that we feel like maybe he's forgotten us. He's not. He is always in your life. He is always working. He is always doing something in your life to bring you to the place that you need to be. Understand that today. God is there for you. All we've got to do is reach out to him. Now, four things I think that Jesus shares with us in this passage of scripture that will help us to continue in the love of God. Okay, the first one is, to, is the desire to do right. In verse 10, he says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Keeping God's commandments, that desire to do right. That's the first step, I believe, and it's why Jesus shared it first. Okay, if we're going to continue in the love of God, we have to have that desire to do the right thing. If more people in this world would do the right thing and not what I think is the right thing but what the Bible says is the right thing <clears throat> okay the commandments you know if you were at the church on no, nope, I guess it's over here nope over here there we go on the wall right there at the church there's a plaque that's got the the Ten Commandments on it okay and uh, we keep that right up there I like to keep that before the people but the Bible is full of commandments and they're all attached to promises if you do this God will do this that's what the Bible is all about it's full of commandments but those they're not uh, shallow commandments and God says if you do this I'll do this and so for my friends today commandments are not a bad thing they're a good thing but it's that desire to do what's right and, and this to me this is in the mind where we make an active choice I am going to do the right thing if more people would do that in this world if people would do the right thing according to the Word of God this world would be a lot better place when the disciples came before Jesus and said, Lord, teach us to pray, that was part of his prayer. He says, you know, pray that thy will, God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, everyone does the right thing. On earth, not so much, okay? But if more people would have that desire in, in, and make that choice, as I said, this is a mindset. This is a, a decision. I am going to do the right thing no matter what anyone else says, no matter what anyone else does or isn't doing, I am going to do the right thing according to the Word of God, according to God's commandments. That desire to do the right thing. Psalm 40 says, 40 verse 8 says, I delight to do thy will. Oh my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. And that, that to me just sums up this whole thing of desiring to do the right thing and making that choice of doing what God says in his word. That's the first step to continuing in God's love and the enjoyment of that God's love. All right. And so my friends today, this is not a hard thing. It's not. It's just a matter of doing the right thing. And it really does benefit. You know, and people, maybe they talk, oh, there goes that goody two-shoes, or that guy always does right, or they take advantage of you. They might, but it doesn't matter. When you do the right thing, you are building treasures in heaven that you will be able to enjoy for all of eternity if you are saved, if you are a born-again person. So first and foremost, number one, if we are going to continue in the love of God and living in, in what I like to call that sweet spot, you know, where, where we're walking in step with the Lord you know if you want to continue in that place where everything just makes sense okay this is the first step is having that desire to do right I shared the illustration in church about you know growing up as a child I, I enjoyed playing baseball I just I played Little League I didn't play when I got into high school but playing in Little League and and when I got up to the plate I was there to hit a home run our local dairy the the straw hat they would give out a free milkshake for every home run you hit so that was all the incentive I needed <laughs> to, to try and hit home runs and so you know I would get up there and I was swinging for defenses I was going to get that home run that's what I wanted and there's nothing like that feeling when you hit that ball with the sweet spot on your bat you know and the ball and the bat and everything comes together and it's just right and the, you, your hands don't even sting because you've hit it just right and as soon as you hit it you know that ball is going over the fence you see the big leaguers do the same thing they know when they've hit that ball just right they know that it's a home run and and there's nothing like that feeling you know if you're a baseball person I guess but anyway uh, for me that was just an awesome feeling it's like bing, you know you hit that ball and you just knew <coughs> that it was going over that's that's and, and that's what I'm talking about living in that sweet spot in life that everything is just right everything is just coming together to hit that home run in life 
that's where we need and, and it starts with as Jesus says having a desire to do the right thing that mindset that I am going to do what's right number two then he said and this is an attitude of our heart is that we need to be full of joy Jesus says that my joy might be in you and that your joy might be full listen when you get saved when you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, the Bible says that we, we, He gives you that Holy Spirit. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. And part of that is Jesus' joy. He's giving us His joy. But He's wanting us to be full of joy. This is an attitude of our heart. Growing up as a child, uh, one of my favorite shows was Winnie the Pooh. I used to like to sit on the couch with Grandma and we would watch Winnie the Pooh. And one of the characters in there was Eeyore, the donkey. And Eeyore was never happy. Never. He had no joy in his life. He'd always walk around me. Oh, woe is me. I've lost my tail again. You know, and I see so many Christians that are the same way. They have no joy in their life. They don't have that attitude of joy. Even though it's there, God's given it to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus has given us his joy. It's there. But we've got to have an attitude in our heart that I am going to live my life as a life of joy. It's not happiness. Happiness is based upon circumstances. Joy is based upon the power of the Holy Spirit of God that is living and breathing in our hearts and in our lives. This is truly an attitude of the heart. We have to make that choice that I am going to be full of joy. <coughs> I remember doing this as a person. Growing up, my life wasn't the greatest, and so <clears throat> a lot of times I was angry and unhappy and didn't enjoy life at all. And I remember thinking, I don't want to live this way. I want to have joy. And so I changed the attitude of my heart so that I could be full. And you say, can you do that? Well, I did. <laughs> so I imagine anyone can, but it's through the power of the Holy Spirit of God that I'm going to choose joy, to have this joy in my heart. That's what he says in Nehemiah 8.10. He says, neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. You know, I said to a couple people just this week, you know, I'm sorry, but there ain't a serious bone in my body. I've got the joy of the Lord Jesus Christ in my heart and coursing through my veins. And it comes out. It just naturally comes out of my life and the way that we live. You know, we, we all have bad days. I get that. You know, it's possible. But uh, that we need to have that attitude of joy in our heart that knowing that I'm saved, I'm redeemed, I have a place in heaven, God loves me, you know, and, and choosing to know these things and choosing to have that joy. That's the second step, the second key to, to, to continuing in the love of God is to have that joy. Because listen, life is going to throw you a lot of unhappy circumstances, plain and simple. Life can be hard sometimes, not always, but sometimes. And when it does, we need to have that joy, knowing that, you know, whatever this is, God, he's got a reason for it. He's got a purpose for it. I'm going to learn. He wants me to learn. He wants me to grow. He wants to use me in this situation, perhaps to be his ambassador or whatever. But to be full of joy, verse 11 talks about that. That's step two to continuing in the love of God. Number one is the mindset. I will choose to do what's right. Number two is an attitude of my heart, an attitude of joy. And quite frankly, my friends, we need to be more like a member of Winnie the Pooh. We need to be more like the other guy, like Tigger. Remember Tigger? He was always bouncy, bouncy, fun, 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 fun. That's who we need to be. We need to have that type of an attitude. You know, that no matter what's going on in life, we choose joy. We are going to have that joy in our hearts. Number three, then, is, is it involves our spirituality. Having a, a spiritual maturity, of, if you will. Twice in this passage, in verse 12 and also in verse 17, he, he commands us, really, to love one another, to love people. And this is a sign of spiritual maturity to me, okay? Because there's a lot of people in this world that are unlovable. You know, and people that we come in contact with, you know, either family, friends, co-workers, whatever, uh, and they are unlovable. But Jesus says, listen, if you're going to continue in my love, then you must love people. God loved us when we were unlovable. Romans 5, 8 says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God commended or demonstrated his love to us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He loved us when we were unlovable. He continues to love us even when we are still unlovable. And so <clears throat> that's what we're commanded to do is to love people, to love everyone, not just the nice people, the kind people, the people that love you, but to love everyone. That's what God does. God loves everyone. He loved me when I was a sinful old soul, lost and on my way to hell. Okay, And that's what changed my life again is when I realized just how much God loved me. And, and we need to demonstrate that love of God to other people by loving people. And when you love people, when you return kindness and love to somebody who is mean and grouchy, many times you melt their heart and you can win them over and bring them to a place of salvation by loving them. Proverbs 18 says, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. It's on us. It's on you today to love people, 
That's why I think in this passage, Jesus commands them twice. Love one another. That's how we continue in God's love. You know, Jesus had those that followed him. But you think about it. When he left, there was really only about 120 followers. There were a lot of people uh, that either hated him or were still on the fence on this matter of who Jesus was. Okay? But after God poured out his Holy Spirit and souls started to get saved and this world started to turn around. But my friends, Jesus just loved people. Everywhere that he went, he ministered, he preached, he taught, he healed, he did all those things. And that's who you and I need to be. We need to love people the way that God loves people. Perfectly, unconditionally, okay, with that agape kind of love, loving people. And that's our that's a sign of spiritual maturity. It, it's it's kind of hard to love people who are unlo unlovable if we're not if we're not uh, being filled with the spirit and, and abiding in the spirit. And if we quench the spirit and do what the fleshly nature says and and turn railing for railing and punch for punch, that's not the way that it's supposed to be. We're supposed to be that type of person that turns the other cheek and just simply lo simply loves people. And so and then uh, number four then. Uh, it is actually involves our physical selves, actually where we go and do things. In, in verse 16, he says that I ascend you to that you should go and bring forth fruit. We'll talk about that fruit here in a second, but the point is that we're supposed to go. This is where us where we physically get involved in other people's lives. Okay, you know, it, it, you could be praying for them, but it, to me, it's more than that. It's actually being involved and speaking and talking and helping and and doing, making a difference in people's lives. Uh, one of the people that I used to listen to on Moody Radio years ago was Ron Hutchcraft. And, and uh, one of the phrases that he would use was, go mad. And that mad is make a difference. Go make a difference. He would tell his kids that when they would go to school. And he would tell the children, the teenagers in his youth group, uh, that phrase, go mad. Go make a difference in this world that we live. And that's what Jesus is saying. Go make a difference. Go and bring forth fruit. We need to get up and go. We need more believers in Christ that will get up and do things that need to be done in this world. And not wait for someone else to do it, but instead us be the ones to do it. And Luke chapter 10 talks about the harvest. And actually this is recorded in three of the Gospels. But he says, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. The harvest is this world that we live in. Everywhere you and I go, this world is full of people that are hurting. Spiritually hurting. Mentally and emotionally hurting. Physically hurting. Excuse me. <coughs> and they need what we have. They need the love of God. And so we need to go. That's why he says, get up and go. Push away from the table and get out there in this world and make a difference in the people that you come in contact with. I guarantee you that the, the people you live with, the people you live in your community, uh, the people you work with, that sort, those people are there for a reason. They need you to be the ambassador of Christ. They need you to show them the love of God, to, to emulate that love in their lives. That's why Jesus instructs us to go and make a difference or to go and bear fruit, as he says. That's the physical part where we actually physically get involved. And so Jesus involved four of our senses here, if you will, in this idea of continuing in the love of God, the mindset of doing the right thing, a heart attitude of joy, a spiritual maturity of loving people, and then the physical activity of going and getting involved in people's lives and doing for them. Okay, And then he talks about this fruit, that we should bring forth fruit. What is this fruit that he speaks of? <clears throat> Many people, when you talk about that we're supposed to produce fruit, is that we're supposed to produce other Christians. And yes, that's part of it. But the Bible is full of, of what fruit looks like. Okay, And I like what Warren Rearsby wrote on this in his commentary on this passage of Scripture. So let me read this to you. It says, when we bear fruit, when we win souls, when, when we win others to Christ, we are bearing fruit. Okay? We've talked about that. But also when we're a part of the harvest, many times when maybe we pray for somebody or just talk to them about the Lord or invite them to church or whatever, if we're just a part of the harvest, we're bearing fruit. As you and I, as we grow in holiness and in obedience to God, we are bearing fruit. Paul considered Christian giving to be fruit from a dedicated life. The fruit of the Spirit mentioned in Galatians chapter 5, the love, the joy, the peace, the gentleness, meekness, kindness, those things, okay? These things are a kind of Christian character that glorifies God and makes Christ real to other people. And when we, That's another type of fruit. And even our good works and our service grow out of our abiding life, okay? And that's what we're talking about here. But the praise that comes from our heart and our lips is actual fruit to the glory of God. And again, this is not an exhaustive list of fruit, but you, you get the point. You see what I'm saying here about what fruit is what fruit looks like okay and so but for some reason my camera's not wanting to focus there 
Sorry about that. There we go. <clears throat> but my friends, we are to bear this kind of fruit. That's what God would have us to do, to make a difference in this world, in other people's lives, bringing forth the love, the joy, the peace, and helping other people in their walk and in their journey with the Lord. Four things, again, that he shares with us to do, that he wants us to do, and they involve four of our senses that we've talked about already, four things that he wants us to do. The mindset to do the right thing, an attitude of joy, spiritual maturity to love people, and then physically going and bearing fruit, making a difference in people's lives, okay? And as I said already, if we do this, if we continue in God's love, if we continue in that, then we live in that sweet spot and everything just makes sense. But Jesus sweetens the pot for us just a little bit more, and he says that we will be blessed. You will, Your reward will be great. He says in verse 16 that if we do, if we abide in his love, then whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Think about that. To live a life that God hears and answers your prayers, that you are so in tune, so in step with God, that, that you see those prayers answered on a, on, a, on a continuous basis, if you will. Listen, I don't consider myself to be there. I've been a Christian for 39, almost 39 years now. Been in ministry for over 30 years, okay? And I really don't consider myself to be to that place yet. It's what I strive towards, the place I'm trying to go. It's what the Apostle Paul says. I, Paul said, I don't consider myself to have apprehended that, for wing, that thing for which also I was apprehended. And so, but he says what? I press towards the mark of the prize of the calling of, 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 in Christ Jesus. I mess that up. But anyway, my friends today, I encourage you to, to want to continue in God's love. That's the place to live. That's the place to be. Okay, that's that sweet spot where God wants us to be. But also, we'll see our prayers answered. We'll see our, we'll see that we've made an impact. That we've made a difference. And and and, and that really, I guess, shouldn't be why we do it. We just do it because it's the right thing to do. Amen. But what a blessing it is to know that when you get involved in someone else's life, when you've made a difference in someone else's life, and you see that, there's nothing like that. There's really not. And so, my friends, today. As I said, if you get nothing else out of this message, understand this. God loves you no matter what. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. And when you understand that, then these four things become very easy. Doing the right thing. Attitude of joy. Loving people. Going and making a difference. Piece of cake. Not a problem at all. It just comes natural. And so I hope and pray that this is a blessing to your life today. That you will have that desire to do the right thing day in and day out. As I said already in the beginning, I encourage you, <clears throat> if you've stuck with me this far, if you're not saved today, you need to be saved. You need to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. Uh, if you're saved, there was a day in your life when you prayed and asked Jesus to be your Savior. Maybe you've forgotten about it, you know, and you're not sure of your salvation or you know that you're not saved, then I encourage you to reach out to me, either through Facebook or YouTube or through whatever, whatever it means. Come to church talk to me about your salvation. I'd love to be able to talk to you about the Lord so that you can know for sure that you're saved, that so that you can continue in the love of God. And Christian, if you're saved and you've lost that joy of the Lord, then my friends, start living for the Lord again. Continue in God's love. It really does make a difference. But as I said, you know, like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell to get notifications, okay, share it on your Facebook page or whatever, on your social media, so that this message can get out to as many people as possible. I'm, again, not trying to make a name for myself, but I believe there's someone out there that needs to hear this, because the devil's been fighting me on this one. And so I just pray that, 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 that this will get into the ears of the right person. And if you're that person today, know this today, God loves you, okay, he truly does. And he wants to do a great thing in your life. So come to Jesus. Come to church, wherever you are. Maybe you live in another state. Find a good Bible preaching church. Get in there and let, let God do a great thing in your life. All right? All right. You all have a great day. And we'll see you again next week. Amen?